Hello everyone, we've come to the end of our journey through the campaign after the storm because we are at episode 3, scenario 10. Blood. Blood? Yes, more blood. You might want to get used to it. There is a lot of it in the place we are heading towards. Okay, Alyssa can summon fire guardians next to Alinea, but regardless of the resistance, the distance between both. Uh, and Alinea is free of her binding spell, which means that she can go where she likes. Gotta locate Jungor. And no early finish bonus, no gold carried over to the next scenario. Fire guardians can be summoned next to anyone, I think. Yep. Attack combinations. Ooh, this is something it never explained in the game. Um, Claw of Avatha plus Ensnare. Um, plus three multiplier bonus to attack damage. Primal Nightmare. I mean, you probably don't want to do those in that order because Ensnare's not that powerful. Um, Primal Nightmare, Claw of Avatha plus Fairy Touch, plus times four multiplier bonus to attack damage. Flames of Tiael. Pyranoctum and Arcane Rage times two bonus to attack damage. Okay, that's pretty cool. Lunar Wrath Noctum plus Arcane Rage. Uh, plus times four bonus to attack damage. Alright, so we got some special stuff available. This one, yep, yeah, okay, so um, those can be used in either order. Let's see what happens. We've got some zombies around. Okay, and now we can have Strength 11, which gives us more melee damage and more hit points. We can give us Focus, which gives us one more Arcane Rage damage. The Arcane Rage is probably the attack we'll be using more often, so I'm going to go for that this time round. You just park up there, and you should, between you, be able to take on anything that comes. Actually, Let's summon some fire guardians, because why not? Oh. They're going to send spectres after us. If we want to have any chance of killing that bastard for good, we must stick together and try to combine our powers and attacks in different ways. Your aspect is undeniably affiliated to the path of light. Mine is darkness. Perhaps even without the Union, we may be able to achieve something in some form. That is why you wanted me by your side, right? Yes. It is my hope that you will not let us down. Alright, so I actually did do this. Okay, um, the attack combinations are something new. No particular reason to use them on these very weak creatures around. The only one that's any threat at all is this spectre, and that's rapidly going to get toasted. Ugh. Oh, the inaccuracy. Oh, for goodness sake. Alright, next one. Alright, the other advantage of having that plus one damage is I can now one-shot soul losses. Good stuff. Right. 
Okay, so we've got a Fallen Fairy. These guys look a bit like shapes shapeshifters. They've got Death Touch, which is an arcane magical attack and a cold attack. They're not too threatening. Okay, we got a Death Knight over there. Still got accuracy problems, apparently. Good job. Okay. Oh dear. Okay, we're gonna have to watch out for night gaunts because uh, if these guys are floating around the place, that makes life a little bit more challenging. I mean, I can't kill these guys, but they can still make themselves irritating. So many enemies over here. Slow enemies. Ooh, I thought I had. Where's the other one? Okay, I only. Oh yeah, there's, there there are six on the map. Sorry. to watch level 3 units just straightforwardly suiciding onto my powerful guardians. Okay, in we go. Wasted! go. You can't do anything useful this turn, so you just go up here. Maybe, or over here. It looks like over here I'm going to have more need. These fire guardians have very variable movement underground. Oh, okay. Oh, miss you. You're actually more annoying than the the weakened enforcer drones. So I'm gonna just go for you and kill you. I think. Good stuff. Okay. Don't really need to fight everyone on the map. So I guess I should just push forward. You go over here just for giggles. Maybe you'll get killed. Yeah, you probably will get killed by that fairy. Okay, it looks like we've got a cave mouth here. Yeah, 
Get rid of the Night Gaunts one by one. More fairies. Dead. Oh, there's a nice statue up ahead. Okay, what's this? This is a custodian drone. Alright, these guys are scary. Um, they can even do some sick damage to my powerful units, so I guess I'd best keep... Maybe keep a linear back and let Alyssa deal with it. Though, to be honest, even Alyssa can get pretty wrecked by these guys. Alright, now we've got reasonable choices all around. Let's see what happens. Oh! More toasted drones. Oh wow! Alyssa one-shots the level 4 custodian drone. It's a good world being level 6. Okay, um, unless it kind of could do with more hit points. Um, I mean, this other stuff's cool too, um, but I feel like, I mean, the the area of effect attacks are not going to be so useful in boss fights, and I'm most worried about boss fights in this level. Um, so I feel like just more ranged damage is really what's needed here. Noctum plus Pyra Noctum. Okay, good, and now my guardians are all kind of shuffling along behind. Is that? CIL, the guardian of Earth. Her first cycle self, to be precise. Don't feel too intimidated by her stature, though. I very much doubt this is to scale. Yes, she was a fairy. I, I'm not sure what I was expecting. Big shoes to fill? Then again, it looks like neither of you have ever worn shoes, for reasons that are surely beyond my ability to comprehend. And again, most likely not to scale. No, I mean, you look so beautiful and dignified. But at the same time, he is so... Mundane? By now, you should know gods come in all shapes and sizes. Although anyone can play god to a sufficiently ignorant crowd, I suppose you would know about that kind of thing. You don't need miracles, prophecies, or mind control to rule over uncivilized brutes. You just need to establish clear boundaries and show your subjects the consequences for stepping out of line. 
Sooner or later someone will test your power regardless, so there is little point to claiming godhood unless you want to paint an even larger target on your back. Ignoring the entire Uriah situation for a moment, what this world needs right now is not another false god. It just needs someone able to purge all the scum and build a new order from the ground up. If that someone happens to have godlike powers, then the job should certainly be much easier. But it does not have to be like that. Okay, Elissa, um... Sounds like fascism, but okay. All right, we've got more custodian drones. Can I get some good defensive terrain? This looks like a good spot. And I can even put the linear in the Sylvan Essence place. Perfect. Okay. Can I get more Fire Guardians? No. You don't need to play the role of Guardian of Earth if that's not what you want. I can feel the question lingering in the back of your head. When my mentor realized the true nature of the Scepter of Fire, he asked me to wield it against the enemies of Erdia with her dying breath. This cursed artifact is bad for your health. You must not use it ever again. I just said... You can say anything you want, but it does nothing to change the fact that you are a creature of light, trying to wield a power that is harmful to your mind and soul. If you want to stop, rightfully belongs to me. I assure you, the thing lurking beneath the ruby's lustrous surface does not care for any sentimental attachment you may have to it. Your mentor's intentions may have been noble, but if you want to save Erdia, you are going to have to learn to let go of the past and not waste your potential living an eternal life of regret. If you truly want to honor her memory, if you want to make her, your friend's sacrifices worth it, then it is time for you to become the guardian of Earth we need, instead of the Lady of Light who lost to her own darkness. But if you don't feel up to the task, then you are free to stay behind, drowning in an endless ocean of sorrow for what little is left of eternity. Elissa really is such a terrible person. <laughs> it's kind of rather depressing that um, there's uh, that this is our pal that we're hanging out with now. All right, Firefly Rain's a bit weaker now, so come in and I think pretty much finish her off with a linear. for you. You're already leveled up, so you go and scout for us. Okay, we've got more random zombies. Ooh, any more zombies? Oh, we've got a spectre. And there'll be some night gaunts around here too. Okay, well you get yourself killed, but you'll lurk out. You'll work out who's lurking up here. Psycho all are quite nasty against my fire guardians. Oh, my Fire Guardians are annoyingly very, very slow. Can I get more? Yeah, one of them died last turn, so I can't get more. Well, that guy got a bit unlucky. Oh. Those guys are nasty. I wonder whether Spectres are using their ranged attack. It seems dumb given that 
the Fire Guardians have such strong ranged attack. Okay. You can already do something. Sad. Okay, some fairly poor performances there. Protect Elinia a bit because she's got she got a bit beat up there. Good for you. You can go and play Zap the Zombie up here. Wow, Pyronoctum is pretty powerful now against these guys. I can almost one-shot Solus. I can almost one-shot these tree Solus. Okay, we've got a Glyph. We've also got a Spectre. I should put Linear in a position where she can heal. You guys are too slow. I'm going to send you up here to fight this thing. Let's go up here. Um, rather you didn't die, you're getting quite useful, but I've just moved you into a position where you probably will die, and I can't undo it apparently, so... Yeah, you can get attacked by both of these guys. Oh well. If you'd rather suicide on Alyssa, that's fine. Who's going to kill what? Um, you can go in here and do some softening up damage. And that's a wrap. So these two are the strong experienced ones.
Fire Guardian's having some severe accuracy problems there. You, wow, you're slow. I guess that's the underground effect. Let's come up here. Into the forest. And we'll get the Fire Guardian here. survived nice one mate you got 59 I oh, bet the other experienced one did not make it rip Yep, these Fire Guardians have got some serious accuracy problems. These guys can't get anywhere because they're too slow. So it looks like it's up to Alyssa and Alinea to deal with the big guy. Probably should deal with the big guy rather than wasting my time attacking anyone else. Unfortunately the big guy is pretty powerful. Some inaccuracy for you. That seemed like it was a combo, though I think it also shouldn't really have been one. Alright, now I can get a few more Fire Guardians around the place, and hopefully this one will survive again. Okay. This guy levels up. That was pointless. Oh, hello, where did you come from? Well, it's free experience. Shouldn't be ungrateful. Okay, this looks like the kind of area where we might expect a boss fight. Um, am I going to bother going over here and killing this guy? I guess I will. No, it'd be quite interesting to look at my statistics. Yeah, minus 6% inflicted, but also minus 7 taken, so I guess it could be worse. What does this do? Is it going to heal me to full health? I bet it's going to... it's just a healing glyph. Seems like a waste. Here we've got Okay, we've got a keep. Hmm. <laughs> he is not here like I expected. I suppose his intention is to make some sort of dramatic uh, in entrance later. Elinia, there is something here you should see. Remove Elinia and Alyssa to 2820 from the immediately adjacent locations. Yeah, that's the 2820. Okay, I need to go up there. Well, 
Oh, I can't get another Fire Guardian. So I guess I will get attacked. Oh wow, there are a few units up here, aren't there? Phew. Well, you're dead. Now you hit with all four attacks. I was hoping you wouldn't, so, as, so that this guy could get the kill. Oh well. Suicide you onto, or should I? Hmm. Be careful here. I'm gonna kill you, Helena, so she can heal again. You can go around the side. Kill. What have we got there? Another fairy. All right. A big chunk of experience for Alyssa. Uh, do I have any more space for fire guardians? Looks like I've got one. There we go. I'm about to have another one. There we go. You're supposed to be good. He's like, you're the good one. Ah. Oh, this is you. So many people to deal with. Okay, I can get to that spot this turn. I suspect the boss fight will start when I do. So let's clear out the rest of these losers. Okay. What is that? In the middle of the blood lake? The seed of earth, the place from which all life on Erdia originally sprang. It is currently sealed in its chamber. There is not much that can be done with, that, with it by anyone other than the guardian of earth. Generally speaking, nobody is supposed to see or tamper with the thing that lays within, not even the controlling guardian herself. That is to say, not even you. Unless, of course, you wanted to reset life on Erdia back to the beginning. That is how the second cycle was started. But if you did that, then every living or non-living creature currently standing on this world would be erased from existence. Even you. 
Doing that would destroy Django, it's sure, but Uriah is not on Erdia, and the loss would be little more than a minor inconvenience to her in the long term. But if you feel particularly selfish about your pitiful existence, this is an option for you to consider. That would be a coward's choice, don't you think? Possibly. But if the Guardian in question feared the absolute end of their own existence, then one could say that making the choice would take some degree of courage. What is your choice? Do not worry, it is not a binding decision, yet. Is that the only possible use for the power stored in this place? To destroy all life in our world, so it can start anew? If Merthial's cautionary story is any indication, yes, but Uriah believes otherwise. She believes that the seeds can be used for other things if the aspect you control is either life or existence, based on the efforts of her predecessor, or the very unreliable information we have about them anyway. But her attempts to find the seed on Avatha have proven fruitless so far, and her patience is wearing thin. As ludicrous as it sounds, she no longer wants to find just the body of the Union on Athea. I see. Then there is no point in doing anything with ours. I suppose. There is so much we still don't know about our own creation. Come to think of it, we should be thankful that Delithia's actions ensured we would not get a proper guardian of existence for this cycle, who could turn out to be an even more powerful deranged psychopath than Uriah. Well, probably. That girl, Anya, her sole existence raises more questions we thought we had already answered. <laughs> Alyssa says, dot 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 question mark. No, wait, dot 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 exclamation mark. That's even worse. But of course, the bastard's plans aren't as aligned with Uriah's own as I originally thought. What a glorious day for Erdia! So, at long last, Argan's little girl solved the puzzle. You are a disgusting liar and a traitor, Jangor. Excellent! That makes us equals in the eyes of the Lady of Light. Or should I now call her the Guardian of Earth on Irtia? Ah yes, Elunia. I have not forgotten what you and Argan did to me. Do you have any idea what it feels like to live for hundreds of years in agonizing pain with your limbs scattered across the land and buried deep in the ground? Do you? You've got nothing to fear. This time I shall make sure nothing remains of your wretched body for Uriah to bring back. And I shall make sure your soul is destroyed forever as well. Without the Union? Go ahead. Try your best. Okay. Big bad boss fight time. Victory condition, vanquished demon lord Jangor. Um... He's d either Elisa or Alinea dies, I lose. Django can kill them because he's got his gatekeeper powers. Um, fire Guardians I can summon. I've got healing glyphs still that I can use if I need to. Those might come in crucial. He's probably going to summon creatures, I suspect. Um, yeah, everyone else is out of the game for now. Except this one ghost. Oh, bless. Alright, so, um, now I'm guessing this is not, in fact, Jangor's final form, because if it were, it'd be a bit more hench. Um, but we have got him here, Jangor, Angel of Blood, he's got a 22-2 Soul Spear attack, he causes terror, which doesn't affect these guys, but will affect the Fire Guardians. Um, he's biomechanical, he's dexterous, um, he's got this Bloodstorm attack, um, which is quite powerful, but not super powerful again. It seems like I ought to be able to kill him relatively easily, which is why I think this is almost certainly not his final form. Let's summon some fire guardians.
and I can have one more of each so why not and how am I going to do this let's look at the attack combinations So Pyronoctum plus Arcane Rage in either order, or Noctum plus Arcane Rage in either order. Uh, Noctum plus Arcane Rage in, 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 has at times four bonus to attack damage. So that seems pretty juicy. Um, and Alyssa's Noctum attack is more powerful, so I should use Arcane Rage first. Well, it does seem like he's resistant. So which is more likely to do more damage? Um, Iron Octum is going to do 42, 84. Um, Noctum is going to do 70. So, okay. Um, Pyron Octum is the better bet. But only but the multiplier. The multiplier makes the difference. Oh, no multiplier. Okay, that was less good than I was hoping it would be. What happened to that multiplier? Oh well, maybe that included the multiplier, that calculation. Alright, he's he doesn't need to be on his castle to summon enemies. He's going to be a bit of a dumbass though, because he's taken himself down to almost no health. Um, because he's level 6, I think... So how much experience will I get from killing a level 6 unit? 48. Which means that Elissa... Um, which means that either of these can actually level up by killing him. So I'll do that and see what happens, because I want to be prepared for what comes next. Uh, here we go, we've got a final form boss. What are you trying to do now? His body is affixed to the ground. Just avoid getting hit by his lightning. Okay, um, health, arcane range shockwave special. That's another splash damage attack. Um, might be good to help clear out some of these weaker units, but then we do have fire guardians for that. Um, Ensnare damage plus one isn't tempting. More hit points is always tempting. Uh, hmm. I mean, Chopwith is only 25% splash damage, which is not very much. So I'm going to go for more health for now. Alright, we've got lots of fallen fairies that have just suddenly appeared. Um, we've got Jangor, um, Gatekeeper of Blood, um, nice little bit of text here. While the history of the war, how the War of Wesmere came to happen is only known to a few elves in the present day, there are few, even fewer people who know about Jangor's true origins. The few rule, work records left of his rule in Ovatha speak of his achievements as an implacable warlord who led his people into a slaughter of unprecedented proportions, sealing the fate of shapeshifters for the rest of eternity. Some sources claim that it was this, his most shameful defeat, that led him to take the power of the mythical sentinel between worlds and seek to amplify it using the souls of Erdia's people as sacrifice. So we've got Terra, he's got 442 hit points. Um, he's got a very nasty Bloodstorm attack, 19-6. He's got a Poison Claw attack. Um, I mean, I don't think that makes any difference against any either of these guys. Um, pretty sure... Oh no, you're not immune to Poison, of all other things. Um, right then. What are these guys? Angel of Blood. Uh, neutral Leadership. Undead. Level 6! Whoa! Um, alright, this is going to be a tougher battle. Um, but I bet there's something, there's probably something that involves killing these guys in order to... Let's see what happens if I try and harm Jangor. I'll use one of these expendable units. Use you. Oh wow, he's got good resistances. 
20% or 30% to everything. Let's just check those combos again, because I feel like I got something wrong last time. Um, Noctum plus Arcane Rage. No, I got it right, it just didn't, didn't work. Or maybe that's the wrong Noctum. I don't know. I don't know. I have got no clue what's going on here. But I feel like I need to kill some of these weak units in order to clear some space. So I will. These guys are absolutely useless attacking Django anyway. It's the terror effect that's the problem, isn't it? That's what's, that's what's causing them to be so crap. Um, yeah, okay, let's move them away. Alright, everyone's doing pretty well so far. Opening up my heroes to some powerful retaliation, but maybe I should go with the heroes and do something else. Yep, I can now fight an Angel of Blood if I want to. They've got slowing attacks, which is not nice. But they don't, um, they're level 6 as well. Um, what they don't do is... They don't regenerate. Um, that leadership ability is very powerful, so I want to ideally kill everyone else before I start fighting them. What about these guys? So let's just try and deal some damage for, for a start. Um, that I can't really can't really afford to range to get range attacked by him. Um, no, I ought to send them to do something. So I guess I'll try and use them at the moment to kill all the fairies. Shame that Elinia can't get into the forest. Alyssa can, but she's not so she's not so forest effective. All right. Um, yeah, you still can't do anything more useful, so. These guys aren't moving, they like, don't seem to be able to. That's something at least. Let's go up here and try and fight this one. Okay. Oh, you went to where the leadership is. That's nasty. Alright. Not terrified yet, though. And it seems like... Let's try and kill you if I can. Uh, 
And who else am I going to try and kill? I'll try and kill you. You're already pretty weakened. You've got leadership, though. That doesn't make you a friendly, friendly face. But you got it. So, let's try and kill these blood angels. What the? Oh, is that what we are doing now, Jungor? I expected you to be more creative than this in a real fight. Okay, so these guys are what? Redistributing damage? Um. So it did. I did take one of those. The other two seem to have been distributed at half um, to a random other angel of blood. Alright, let's try... So it's either a hundred or... I'll try this one. Whatever's going on with the damage on these guys, it's really not obvious. This one looks pretty badly wounded though. Maybe I can get rid of it next turn. In the meantime, I can place some cautionary fire guardians. And try and block off the worst. There we go. This one's on full health now, but uh, it won't stay that way for long. First of all, let me... This drone... ...has been around for too long, and now it is gone. Alright, no more of those guys. Unfortunately, you get the more the greater power. So let's try and kill this guy first, or maybe it'll kill someone anyway. Well, that wasn't hugely effective. Destroying those things is increasing my power somehow. But also seems to be increasing Jangors. There is something about the energy released from these cores, although I have a feeling Jangor benefits from it as well. Okay, um, can have strength, can have scorched earth, can have more to spare. Um, I mean, at this point, there are hardly any other units around, so the the area of effect seems even more useless than it otherwise would, unless Jungle is going to summon more guys. So I'll just go for more health. And this one is still around, so... That's a shame. But a lot of them are looking very weak now. Okay, this one's on 5 health, this one's on 17 health, and then there are two that are more or less full. But what I can now do is summon more fire guardians. Jungle can't move. You can still get round to attack. Okay, that's good. Oh yeah, you are summoning, summoning more guys. <laughs> Mm. 
and the fairies are back. Fairies are back in town. So let's continue to blast these guys. Where did you come from? What, what's, what's your relevance to all of this? Okay, another one's gone, so I've got more health, but I've also got... I'm also slowed and wounded. Um, three down, three to go. This one, this one here is amazingly still here, despite the fact that, uh... Okay, who am I going to try and kill with these guys? Drones. Could try and kill this guy. You'll probably get more more money now, won't you? try and kill this one because otherwise it's going to come in and be irritating. Oh, I can make use of Illinia's protection which is cool. Three hits would be nice. Nope. And these two are very weak, so probably going to get some damage on Alinea and Alyssa this turn. Well done. Well, that didn't last long. Well, drones at least. Not really a threat. Alright, these guys surely can't hold out for much longer, so let's try zapping some more of them. Um, not dead. That was good, but unfortunately didn't really make the most use of that particular type of attack. Alright. Um. Six, good. Okay, 
few more drones are popping up, they're no concern. Um, and I guess... I should pretty much just keep on doing what I'm doing. Okay, another one dead. Two left. And I need some more fire guardians. There we go. Elinia's looking a bit the worse for wear. But I can put her onto a healing glyph as soon as I get rid of these guys. I bet Zerangor's not going to be happy when I do that. <laughs> He's on 600 health. That's just obscene. Yeah, that's obscene too. Back, please. Ah. Uh. Maybe, um, maybe Alicia should go first this time. Well, let's still keep trying to clear out these guys. And these fallen fairies just keep appearing every few turns, so there's not much I can do about them. Um, don't really care much about the Psy Crawlers. Um... Okay, one left. Oh, it's because they're moving, they're swapping places. That's what I wasn't quite getting. And uh, Elissa didn't get the bonus the first time round because I wasn't hitting the same one. That was pretty weak. Um, it'd be nice to kill these two. Still, they're still on leadership terrain, though. If I weaken them enough, it shouldn't matter. Well, it doesn't really constitute weakening them enough. You, though, I want you weakened. Fairies are Jungor's equivalents of the uh, of the Fire Guardians. They're just an irritating troop type that he can keep respawning. All right, I'm getting pretty mobbed. Uh, looks like we are close to the end, but. Right, that's the end of those guys, and no more leadership for you annoying little buggers. So you stay where you are. I can't go onto that tower, unfortunately. No one can go there, which is a shame.
Oh, you're scared because you're next to because you're next to Alyssa, aren't you? Yeah, that's cool. Okay, well nothing else has spawned yet, so do we go and try and take on Jungle himself? He's got 742 health now, which uh, doesn't make fighting him the most appealing prospect, but then again, Elinia's pretty tanky as well. Can I kill this thing? Right, so nice hundred and ten hit points for Alinea. Kill what you can. Three more fire guardians. All right, Jungle has more money. And some more fairies. Weirdly, only only five. Um, oh yeah, because one of them isn't dead yet. So they keep respawning, basically. Okay, so now the, the objective is to kill Mr. Zed himself. And that, it's less clear how to do. Let's clear out at least his level 1s. A few more fire guardians.
Lol, level 2 drones. It's nice to be able to say that. Let's go for it. Do I want to summon another guardian there? No, why not? Certainly doing plenty of damage. All right, let's get some more fire guys. Do I want to put them here where they'll be scared? Probably not. A level uh, for Elissa. First strike on Chlorovavatha. If she's going to keep getting melee attack, that could be quite handy. Um, or else just more hit points and melee damage. I'll go for the initiative. the drone spawns. Oh wow, you're very close to a level, and you guys are level 3, so... Um... What do you what do you level into? Oh, you don't level into anything. You just you just after maximum. All right, I can just ignore you then, I guess. Django just healed. He's weakened. Um, he's lost that extra health that he had. I want to kill this person, but they'll they'll kill themselves. It's fine. I guess I had better try and kill you. Down you go. <laughs> Alright, Django's only support is one lousy level 2 drone. So let's get the slow in. Noctum. Oh look, he's on 9 health! That's hilarious for a unit who had 700 a minute ago. Um, is this his final form or is he going to do something even bigger and even scarier? I kind of feel like this might be it, but I guess we'll find out. Okay, he summons more units. That's not going to help him. Down he goes. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, dear gods. Will this ever stop? What is the matter, guardians? Do you fear killing those of your own kin now? Have you not become accustomed to it over the course of your pathetic lives? You, you killed me.
You left me to die. Okay, Jungle is now on... This is... Yeah, okay, even more powerful Bloodstorm attack, but he doesn't have as much health as he did before. Um, Alright, I guess I should try and kill some of these summons. At least it doesn't seem wise to leave them alive. Gallus is not very powerful, um, <laughs> which, is, which is pretty true to form. Argan is a bit, bit tankier. Well, that's the end of Galas again. We've got Garak over here. Um, he again is not the most terrifying of units. Um, Argan is more of a threat. Nirione also, because she has a slow attack. And there's level ones too. This guy is all the way over here. That's just a normal shapeshifter, isn't it? Yeah, level two shapeshifter. I'm going to suicide onto Argan, and I can summon more. But I don't actually have that much space to summon, so how many could I summon? At the moment, only three more. Yeah, this, ma this makes more sense. Okay, I'm going to try and Pyra Noctum Argan out of existence. Your imitation of Argan is once again absolutely pathetic. <laughs> yeah, Alyssa gets what's going on. Try and slow, because I don't want to get hit with the full force of this thing. And now I can get another Fire Guardian. Alright. And we're playing the Elissa Chain Suicide game, are we? I assume you are important to her in some way. <laughs> I think it would be better if I got that kill with um, with Alinea, but never mind. They are manifestations of Jungle's will, not even real shapeshifters. I hope you enjoyed your stay with us, sweetheart. I'll kill you! Who even was that? Okay, so now, unfortunately, Alyssa's looking pretty badly beat up, so I think I should retreat her to somewhere where she can get a full health restore. Like, over here. What's happened to that one ghost? It's still there! Okay. Never needs to go near it. Jungle is not looking super healthy, and this, this champion... Garak dies. You don't get to, you don't get banter if these units don't get killed by by one of the heroes. It looks like. You go into the forest where you can heal up. I 
and you guys just get into position so that you can block. There we go. Everything, I think, blocked apart from this one spot. So you heal in linear, you stay where you are, you go there, and then next turn, well, hopefully. Ah, oh, okay, we've got more drones, more shapeshifters. Oh, not you guys again. Really? Maybe they don't come back if they're killed by one of the guardians. Maybe they have to be killed by the right person. In which case... Let's soften you up a bit. You failed to protect me. I no longer care for any of this, Jangor. I no longer care. You're a tanky one. Okay, I should try and kill Nirione with um with a linear, I think. Okay, that should be doable now. Oh, I don't know. She's pretty resistant. And if these guys hit with three attacks, then... for the slow, aren't you? Ah. Oh, this is on Linde! Oh, I didn't even realise that. Taking advantage of my protégé's heart so soon after my death? You truly are a shame, shameless creature. It should be quite funny to have Alyssa kill her, I think, because after all, and Linda sacrificed her life to kill Alyssa originally. For someone who wants so much to stop Uriah, you are hardly any different from her kind. You are not wrong. Oh, 
All right, anyone else for us? We're on full health, so I think we've got a pretty good shot at it now. yourself Who? what is happening to him this is getting out of hand we need to defeat him here and now damn straight we do this is his what fourth form to his body okay crimson nightmare um, got a poison aspect of existence Regeneration, um, plus, oh wow, there's some fascinating stuff going on here. Level 7, so even my heroes are going to be scared. Um, undead, dexterous, this nightmare grasp melee attack is pretty nightmarish. Um, text is not super helpful. Um, I don't, it's hard to tell in this kind of scenario whether this is a bug or whether it's something that's actually supposed to happen. Um, same with some of these bugs. Okay, well he's got regeneration 999 hit points per turn apparently. So it's not super obvious how one can even do that. Let's try with some... That's not the way. all well and good but if he really does regenerate 999 hit points per turn it's not going to do me huge amounts of good let's just hope that's bullshit I need someone with a, with a berserk attack, that's what I need. Whittle him down a bit and then... Pretty unlucky at hitting these guys, it has to be said. Okay. Alright, well, he only. Alright, this is definitely doable now, because he didn't, in fact, regenerate 999 hit points per turn. So, just to be. fully completionist about this. We'll try and finish off his units. Oh, and there's another purple drone that's summoned up there. Okay, get, let's get the slow.
wonder if the I wonder if attacks need to be absolutely consecutive in order to count as a combo. Nope, clearly not. Yo, cannot destroy me. Do you think we can do it? He should not be able to focus us anymore. No, I'm not ready yet. Just keep striking at him with all you have. I am the Angel of Blood. Well, okay, Hellbound Scourge. Um, what does his description say now? Again, nothing helpful. Um, 44-4 Claws attack. Elissa is about to get a level. So let's slow him. I'm use Elissa for the big damage. You are nothing but a sad memory of who you once were. It seems Uriah did not do such a good job in bringing you back from the grave. And a level for Elissa, which will be strength. Okay, that's the end of my turn. Perhaps she was aware that you would eventually betray her, or perhaps she did not have the same infatuation she had with Argan. Elissa, are you still with me? Yeah, who are you talking about? Is this... is this the fate of our kind? Should we allow emotions to overpower our minds? No. Jangor devoured the heart of a gatekeeper. He became like this of his own volition. Focus, Alyssa. Okay, and we even managed to get a level there. Alright, you've got a 256-1 always hits ranged attack. That's pretty nasty. Maybe I can slow you before it goes in. Yeah, there we go. Um, and he's back to level 6. So I guess we finish it with the Noctum. Focus! What I do know for sure... ...is that you are done, Elinia. He will come for you at the end. The four will not suffice to defeat, to defeat him. Pierce into the heart of stone. Release the soul back to the void. Break the curse of Yare. Dispel the spirit from this world. And there we are, everything fades to black. It is all well, children of Erdia. You may rest now.
Okay, and we're on to scenario 11, after the storm. Rise up, Elinia Thanadria, guardian of earth. You and the heiress of the first guardian of darkness have much work left to do. Elinia? I am here. Have I mentioned yet how much I despise you? Dear Anya, I am sure that by the time you find the glyph containing this encoded message, you will have won the battle on the surface and proven yourself worthy of your title as the Lost Guardian of Darkness on Eodia. I am also certain that Agea will finally reveal to you the destiny that was laid for me by the will of our creators. You will surely know by then as well what Uriah's plan entails for all of us. As Eloran said, Eodia is not the only world at peril. There are many other worlds like ours which will be similarly wiped from existence if Uriah gets hold of the body of the Union and the seed of life on Ethea. Our mission is to stop Uriah at all costs. We know that not all of the worlds seated to have a guardian have reached maturity yet. We know that Ethea might not have its own guardian of life yet. But it is our hope that we might be able to find her before Uriah herself does and ensure that we have a chance to stop her somehow. We know that the guardian of water from Norsula has arrived there and may have already seized its seed. Our main concern for the moment is finding the real heiress of Uriah on Ethem and the body of the Union. Unfortunately for us, we do not know much about Ethea or where to begin our search. Sitting idly here on Eodia would not accomplish anything but the continuation of our existence. According to Elissa and the Guardian of Earth and Selida, my work here is complete. Eodia has slowly come back to life after the last few centuries, a feat which would have been impossible without my presence. I have seen both life and destruction take place since I was woken up from my slumber. Darkness has been an opposing force for very long, but as Malkishar, Adlinde, and Alyssa herself proved to me, it can also be revitalizing for a world that needs the means to protect itself from two scorching suns and the malignant forces that broke the previous balance. The impenetrable darkness currently shrouding Erdia protects it from the gaze of the seer of Uriah. But if it lasts for too long, all life on Erdia will end as well. While Elissa was previously responsible for this barrier within the frontiers of the Chaos Empire, the power that recently extended it, for and beyond, is not hers. It is yours. I never got the chance to speak to you about these matters because of how distant I became ever since I had to kill Argan. I thought that opening up and letting others into my life could only cause more harm to them. But I finally realized that this did not solve anything. By isolating myself from the world, I only made things worse for everyone, something which even Alyssa could see. Perhaps she understood this better than I because of our shared curse. Or maybe it was something she learned while under Argan's protection. Then again, it also appears to be natural for Guardians of Darkness to see through that invisible veil that conceals people's fragile minds. And you are a Guardian of Darkness too. The power to peer into my feelings is a part of yourself, and you are unconsciously making use of it all along. All this time, you tried to reach into me, and I would not let you in. But now it is all clear. I am sorry, Anya. I am sorry for not realizing any of this before. I should have let you reach into my heart. We should have done this together like you wanted. Even though things did not turn out as either of us hoped, 
You were a good friend. A better friend than I deserved, perhaps. There are so many things you do not know yet, Anya. I am no one to decide your fate for you, Anya. But the first thing you must do is to come at peace with your feelings and end the night. And once you have made a decision, you must ensure that the breach remains well guarded and protected. We do not know how to seal it yet. But we can defeat Uriah. We will surely find a way to undo the damage she has caused on Erdia and Ovatha over the years. And then I will return and keep the promise I made to you. Goodbye, my friend. Trust your heart. All right, we've got some uh, credits and uh, Iris Morel, uh, Shadow M or uh, Shikadi Queen, as she uh, used to be known, is the person responsible for not quite all of this, but pretty much everything. Um, yeah, Charles Dang, Stephen Panek, Veltraz and Esprion, thank you very much for your playtesting. 8680, Charles Dang, Namara and Stephen Panek um, for your proofreading. Catherine Pollocate for the portrait art, Marcus Rosane Sleepwalker. I'd love to see more of that. I'd love to see a portrait for Anya and Agea, for instance. Ben Venza, Baal Maririn, Charles Dang, Dufus One, and Emilian Rotteval, Eki Lonkinen, Evilest, Francisco Munoz, GK3 and Hunya Haskold, Near Revenant, J.W. Beer, Larry Niemannen, Musket Aquid, Nia Rice is Good, Peter Garnitz, Rainer Tiles Prokeen, Richard Kettering, Samuel Wilson, Santiago Ibarra, Shield, Stephen Metcalf, VYNLT, and Zero Virus. Astrid Halberkamp, Peter Geinitz for the Araguay faction. Um, Alexei Aubrey Carson, Blake Ewing, and Jeremy Nicole. Matthias Westlund and Maria Cavallo. Teleron. Tyler Johnson. Kabachuha, New French 83, and Rat Army for translations. Additional thanks to 8680, Alexander van Gessel, Astrid Halberkamp, Van Nuetzimber, Charles Dang, and Derek Hoagland. Dimitar Ilkov, Doc Rock, Elvish Hunter, Elvish Pillager, Mr. Fuzzy, and Inky. Catherine Pollockade, Comrade 2, Layla, Lily, Matthias, Matthias Schuch, and Michael. Piotr Shikowski, Namara, Richard Kettering, S.E. Bruin, Sergei Popov, Soul Sword, P.M. Werther. Stephen Panek, Turok, and Zoltik. Thanks for playing. Well, thank you for making it. This has been a fantastic experience. And I'm glad I've been able to revisit it so many times. It's uh, pretty rare for user-made content to uh, suck me in just as thoroughly as this campaign is. So thank you so, so much for all of the many hours of pleasure. Even when I was fighting through dungeons full of countless level 2 drones. Even that was, was vaguely fun. Because I'm, yeah, I do enjoy the pain. At least a little bit. All right. Episode 3, Scenario 12, Destiny Part 3, and then... You are now the Guardian of Darkness, on Erdia. No. Actually, you do not consider that the title befitting of your actual role. Ever since you recovered from the gruesome attack of Jango's beasts, Agea has used you as an instrument to liberate both her people and Erdia from Uriah's influence. 
They call you the Dark Lady, Yechnogok the Revived, the Goddess of Darkness, and the myriad other titles you do not actually deserve or care for. You feel like a pawn in someone else's game, but you are not quite sure anymore for which side you play. Things were far easier when Alinea was around. You admired her stalwart sense of righteousness. You admired her courage in confronting the most fearsome enemies faced by Edia in this era. Enemies once thought invincible, now fallen and destroyed forever. However, after reading the journals of Galas, Elinia, and Argen, you cannot help but feel profoundly disheartened. You grew up hearing of Elinia's feats from Eloran and Tara. Now that you know more about her and are nearly her equal in power, it all suddenly feels vain and pointless. So many things could have been avoided if Uriah and her people did not monopolize access to knowledge about your destiny. A sentiment of uselessness suddenly overwhelms you. You are a fraud. You have not even been able to control the darkness that keeps Naya and Sela's light from reaching Idia's surface. How long does Agea intend you to play your act for the Chaos Rebels? If only you could consult with Elinia about the matter. If only the other Guardian of Darkness, Elissa, had stayed on Erdia instead of taking your friend to that alien world. If only. Elinia told you to trust your heart, but you are not quite sure you can do that anymore. After all, it was your heart that deceived you in the first place. It blinded you to Alinea's actual plan, and it fooled you into thinking that perhaps she would ever consider you as anything more than a friend. But enough of that emotional nonsense. Your role as a Guardian of Darkness is to make decisions with your mind, not your heart. You have gathered all the knowledge you need for making a decision now. What does your mind tell you? Find the teleport glyph leading to the breach site. Okay. We've got a glyph right in front of us. There is absolutely nothing else of value encoded into this crystal glyph. Time to move on. Well, it just gates down here. We've got some drones. Are they going to fight me? Am I going to fight them? I guess so. Come to Mama! Ah, here we are. That was not the right glyph. The crude maps you found of these underground levels show a plethora of teleport glyphs without any indication as to their respective de destinations. It is ridiculous. Whoever built this stronghold did not know the first thing about proper organization. Well, there is no going back now. What does this glyph say? Um, do I wish to be healed? No, not really. Let me get this village, see if that does anything. Getting closer to that level. I mean, if there's healing glyphs here... Nice level. Strength X, Shielding X, or Vitality. Impact Resistance and Fire Resistance sounds juicy. I'm gonna go for that. Be a while till I get another one of those. Level, level 1 drones, not the scariest right now. Sorry about the mouse issues. So that's another healing glyph. Heavens, some damage I can't heal in a single turn, how terrifying. 
Oh, now here's someone I might actually want to be afraid of. I'll leave him to come to me. Surviving more than two hits? How dare you, you cheeky little bastard. Now I have to say the idea that Anya wants to be more than a friend with um, Elinia is not actually something that I expected. Um, I must just be too heteronormative in my head, unfortunately, because that didn't occur to me at all. Um, and it's not like it wasn't hinted at. But, uh, yeah, there you go. There's a reveal from me. Alright, another health glyph. Might want to be healed after fighting this guy. Oh, CBA. I don't seem to be able to miss. More drones. Yeah, I think I must be. There must be a script in place that means I always hit. Because I don't recall missing it in this scenario. Alright, oh, which way? Which way? That way, I guess. There's a little teleport glyph. Access denied. Alright, that was unexpected. Perhaps this is the teleport glyph you've been looking for all along and it was locked on purpose. Maybe Alinea and Alyssa did not want you to follow them after all. A wall moves. Okay, find another access way to the breach site. Full health. Haven't needed to use any of these healing glyphs yet. Alright, we've got more stuff here. We've got... The glyphs' contents seem to be in a language you have never read nor heard before. Cliff. Her mission as the guardian of life of our cycle was subverted by her own will through a series of unfortunate circumstances, but not stopped. Whereas a normal guardian of life should ensure that life can prosper and thrive in their world, Uriah has destroyed the lives of countless people on Urvatha and Irdia. However, she has also created life by stealing and embracing technology created on Norsula, as well as ancient Eirdia. The scriptures say that a guardian of life should not be able to create life. Well, whoa, mouse weirdness. The fact that the Norsulans have access to unprecedented knowledge of the guardian's biological aspect has been useful to Uriah so far. But she fears the day that was foretold by the seer, in which the new guardian of water will arise and attempt to rob the guardian of life's rightful prize. 
Although Uriah has agents on Norsula trying to find this man, or beast, before his awakening can take place, such a task is doomed to failure. And you're close to another level now. Norsula is a large world, even larger than Ethere or Irdia. Around the time I first arrived on Irdia, Norsulans were still a largely ignorant bunch, lacking the boon of magic that the Irdians embraced early on in their world's history. But at some point, their technological development rate suddenly surpassed that of Irdia or even Ethere. Some say that an external influence contributed to their accelerated evolution as a world. All right, there is a, an opening over there. There is also a red teleport glyph. The glyph's contents seem to be in a language you have neither read nor heard before. Lovely. Okay, is this going to teleport me straight away? Touch plate trigger, the wall moves. I bet that's the wrong one anyway. I'll go back and see. Doesn't have a turn limit after all. This glyph seems different from the rest. It seems to encode some kind of spell instead of a message. You wonder what would happen if you try it out. Nothing. This is absolutely pointless. I don't know. The sound was pretty cool. Oh, we got abominations, have we? Strength X. Oh, this looks like a nice teleport glyph. Let's just check what's in the rest of this room first. Zippity squats, okay. Access granted. This seems to be the teleport glyph you are searching for, but do you really want to proceed with this plan? Are you absolutely sure that it is worth it? I can go for yes, I want to see Alinea again. I need I'm absolutely sure I need to see Alinea again, I need her. No, perhaps I will explore around a little more and try to make up my mind about this, or just no. Well, I think it's time to say yes. No matter how much I want, Irja will never be my true home. I've always been an outcast. I don't belong with either species. And I don't want to take part in Argea's plans anymore. At least on Athea, I might be able to find Alinea and tell her that I want to be with her. Do you? Yes. I do. I really do. Is this your heart speaking? Or your mind? I guess it's both. Oh dear gods, am I really speaking to myself now? Forgive me, Dervan, Ergea, Aurelian. A worm following me? Why do you still hesitate, girl? 
you're almost there. What if Alinea rejects me? What if I'm actually not supposed to do this? Trust your heart. Those were Alinea's own words. That is correct. I... I will do this. I am sorry, Alinea, but I need you. I need you. This is not the same Uriah I first met in the darkness. The kind and loving girl who kept my broken body alive does not exist anymore. Her name was Lyphonea. Her people saw her as some kind of messiah, meant to do great things for the denizens of Urvatha, who longed for the end of the era of great strife and the beginning of the fabled era of unity. They all knew she had been chosen by destiny to become the new guardian of life, successor of one of the goddesses who sacrificed their very existence to give the universe a new opportunity to live. But things changed after that fateful day. That day we were exploring ancient ruins in our endless quest for knowledge of our destinies. Lyphonea thought the ruins could guard the secret of the creation of life, but all we found there were more vague scriptures and grandiose descriptions of the feats performed by the previous guardian of life. Upon our return to the village, we saw the aftermath of the carnage. Her people were not conquered and enslaved, as is the norm with other demon lords. No, the malefactor behind the bloodshed had a very specific goal in mind, ensuring that the foretold era of unity would never come to pass. Dorvoth of the Val Demons knew nothing specific about the girl who was to become the new guardian of life, only her species. So the logical step for him was methodical genocide. Of course, what little he knew about Lyphonea's destiny was information he obtained from the seer herself, a being who betrays no one and takes no side in any conflict. This demon lord Dorvoth simply failed to ask her the correct question. After that day, Lyphonea changed. She focused all her time and energy, probing the mysteries of the aspect of life, but it was all in vain. Decades later, Dorvoth did not simply meet the girl always predestined to end him but an enraged goddess bent on his destruction. A goddess who had just learned that creating or restoring life was not amongst the powers naturally conferred to her by the tree. He never stood a chance against she who went on to adopt the name of her predecessor as her own. Ah, interesting. So one of the things that was supposed to be mysterious about Uriah is why she was the same goddess in the first cycle and the second cycle. And I guess the answer is she wasn't. Lyphonea was the new guardian. And she simply took over Uriah's old name. Uriah kept telling herself it would only be a matter of time, that she would help both her world and the world I adopted as my own. But as time passed by, her efforts proved fruitless, until she met the seer herself. The seer told her that Yarai consciously chose to prevent us from reaching his tier of power, placing various restrictions in the design of our universe. Restrictions that could be overcome or exploited given sufficient time and research. Restrictions that Delethia herself may have managed to break in order to create the gatekeepers and her other rumoured progeny. Restrictions that could be abolished with the various instruments left behind by the first gods. Uriah began to see our universe not as a system which she was meant to heal and protect, but rather as an inherently flawed creation 
that needed to be replaced. Unbeknownst to Dorvoth, he was indirectly responsible for fulfilling the prophecy of the Era of Unity, at least in its most literal form. Over time, Uriah conquered every last demon lord who stood in her way, and forced them to either join her cause or be annihilated, along with their subjects. She established a new power hierarchy, with herself at the top, and the belligerent demon lords forced to serve her for as long as they lived. It did not take her much time to crush all those who dared to defy the new order. From every conquered race, Uriah would learn something new, for the peoples of Avatha are all descended from survivors of the first cycle, and a few of them managed to preserve some ancient knowledge to this day. She would eventually gain access to Selida, a sibling world that existed under the same starless sky as Ovatha. And of course, she would find a way to subdue the Guardian of Earth born there, to ensure she would not interfere. In time, Uriah would come up with a contrived series of theories and plans to ascend to the level of the First Gods without committing Merthial's mistakes. The goal, creating a new perfect universe in which life would be completely controlled by her will. A universe without death, a universe without Yare's creations, and most importantly, a universe where she would be the only ruling goddess. But to achieve that goal, she would have to cope with the power growing inside her, the power of the Guardians, drawn from the source amidst the endless void beyond our universe. Unlimited power. It is clear now that she failed to escape from the nefarious tendrils of that corrupting force. I am writing this now as I prepare for the inevitable. My arrangement with Uriah requires me to forfeit free will in order to allow Elissa to live. Sooner or later, this will lead to my own demise, but I am somehow not troubled by this notion. It is said that great things will come afterwards. If anyone finds this journal, they will learn the truth. But I also want them to ensure that Elenia does as well. And then, when the time comes, she will know what must be done. And she will know that she need not mourn my death. Because sometimes, your loved ones must be willing to sacrifice their lives for a greater cause. <laughs> it has been hundreds of years since my last visit to Selida, and yet nothing has changed. I am so delighted to see your subject here, Siael. It is such a warm welcome. Did you miss me? What brings you here? We had a pact of neutrality and mutual respect, Siael. You would not interfere with my plans, and I would let you govern your precious people here in peace. But it has come to my attention that there has been a breach of terms on your part. My seer just revealed some troubling things to me. You have been meddling with my personal playground in the main branch of our universe, corrupting and manipulating he who used to serve as my voice on Erdia, as well as his treacherous protege. What did you expect to accomplish with this? To circumvent our pact by utilizing the Guardian of Earth on Erdia as your piece for your next move? Did you truly believe I would never find out? My only intention was to fulfill my duty as the Guardian of Earth and point my children on Erdia in the correct direction. That is to say, as far away from your grasp as possible, so they may stage your ultimate downfall. On Ethea? Hmm, hmm, well, it just so happens that my forces are already on their way there. And this time, I will personally take care of any opposition we find. Even the new Guardian of Water? I received word that he is already there. You fear him, don't you? 
Of course, he poses as much danger to our existence as you do, but he at least manages to keep his destructive tendencies under control. You, on the other hand, you are corrupted goddess, Lifanea. If I may not stop you, then someone else has to take up that mission for me. I see how it is then. But tell me, Aridelis, did you forget the rule of one? I did not. Your insolence cannot go unpunished. Even though I knew from the very beginning that things would come to this, I cannot allow you to interfere with my plans any further. You are a poor excuse for a guardian of Earth, and this is not even your rightful domain. The true guardian of Earth is awake, so your purpose in this universe has been fulfilled. Now that you have helpfully advanced my pieces to the world on which I needed them in the first place, the game is over for you. After all, there can only be one. I am willing to face oblivion at your hand for my transgressions, but you shall spare my people. Mm-hmm. What makes you think that I have to keep my word anymore? Please. If there is anything left of the kind Lifanea in your heart, you should spare my people as we agreed. Lifanea is no more! If it helps, your subjects will be able to enjoy whatever afterlife is in store for them, but you will not. Farewell, Siael. Your reign on Selena is over. Subtle, I like it. Soon there will be a reckoning, Alinea Thanadria. Mark my words. Do not forget who made the resurrection of your new ally possible in the first place. And there we are, back at the uh, starting menu. So I hope you've enjoyed watching this. I hope you've enjoyed my playthrough. Uh, and yeah, uh, I'd appreciate hearing from you if that's the case. Just leave a comment in the uh, comments section. Maybe even like or subscribe. Who knows what's coming next on this channel? Maybe another Wesnoth campaign? Maybe something else? Who knows? Either way, don't hold your breath, but uh, I'll be back. Goodbye, everyone.